Hello, I'm Reginald Bullock. And my name is Trey Wilder. And on today's show, this is called Just Living. It's the first episode called The Pilot. I like it. I like it. You know, it's kind of like instincts. You know, uh, when, when you're playing basketball, you know, somebody throws the ball to you. You don't have to concentrate. OK, I got to get my hands like this. The ball is getting close. I got to time it just right and clamp down on it and catch it. And then after that, I got to think about what to do. You don't think about none of that. It's just the ball in the air, and you automatically know what to do yeah. because you've done it many times. That's so cool. therein lies your ability to have a lot more ed- intelligence because how many things have you ever done in life yeah. that constitutes layering of information mm-hmm. and diversity so you don't have to think about those things anymore because right. you know that you know that you know. Like a person who can't fight, right? Somebody do this to them, you know? <laughs> right, right. Because they're not used to that. But a person who can't fight, somebody do that to them, they'll be like, no, nah, they may just look at you. You didn't hit me. Mm. That's different. You've seen if me you do sw- it. I'm about to say, if you swing and you just feel like you didn't hit me, you don't move, that is kind of tough. Like, I'm at least give you a little more, like, at least a little back, back, like, just. It, Maybe it depends on how close they are. I just, I just stare at you like, you didn't hit me. That's crazy. And I knew you weren't going to hit me. Because mm. if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Right. Why? Because I've had this experience before of being hit a lot yeah. and hitting back. So I'll take you one or two. It's fine. <laughs> but then it's my turn. So, therefore, I don't flinch like that all the time. Mm-hmm. Because of the experience, so there's just so many things that you can you can do. You ever be in a car with somebody that's driving, and you're like, "Oh, this is," because they don't really have the experience that yeah. you think they have. Yeah. Then you get in a car with somebody else, and you don't care if they thread the needle or do whatever, because you know they know what they're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. Now that yeah, I got uh, yeah, <laughs> like that maybe that first time, that first time they do it, but after you see how they do it, mm-hmm. you're comfortable because anybody like I've had coworkers. I'm going, it's, we're on the interstate. I'm going 60 to 70. Mm-hmm. I'm flowing with traffic. Mm-hmm. But the report comes out like, oh, well, they were nervous at first in the car ride because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm speeding. Right. Flowing with traffic. Right. I, but at the end of it, though, we're comfortable. Yeah. And sometimes it's just because they're not in control. Exactly. And they're giving control up to you. Exactly. And that's a whole different thing of this that that realm that we're talking about where somebody else is in control mm-hmm. and you're not used to that kind of like some people don't want to fly because they have no control whatsoever of right. that whole process that's fair too of being in the air and coming back down and so they don't want to fly mm-hmm. all right but then you got other people you know they get on airplanes no big deal fall asleep before the aircraft takes off wake up when they feel like it's landed and they're comfortable yeah so it's that experience space. Okay. Then you got some people that don't want to get I mean, they don't travel ever because they're afraid of different environments. And then you have other people that travel the world all of the time because they're fine. You okay. know, I know it's like when I travel around and I see street meat and food and everything, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to eat that, I'm going to eat whatever. I don't care where I'm eating. They can eat it, I'm eating. Right. Right. Then you have other people that, no, if I'm not familiar with it and it's not cooked the way I'm used to it, I'm not eating. That's fair. So it's just life, man. And it, and it goes towards everything, even schools, right? You have community college, and then you have Ivy League, and then you have everything in between. What causes a person to want one versus the other? Or what causes a person to not want one versus the other? Yeah. So that's culture, that's experience, that's upbringing, it's economics. There's a lot of things associated with that. Mm-hmm. But then you have somebody grow up in the projects, in the hood, and they say, I'm going hard. I'm getting my law again. Dude, you ain't even got enough money to get your lunch. <laughs> How you gonna go to Harvard? I'm going to Harvard and I'm getting my law degree because that's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Because that's where their mindset is. And they have enough intelligence to understand that they have the capability to get of there. doing that. And now they're gonna put in the work it takes to get more of whatever it takes right. to get into Harvard. Yeah. Then you got some people who, you know, community college. Only reason they're going to community college is because somebody told them to right after high school. Right. And when they get there, they just want to show up and do nothing 
and then at the end of the semester, they fail English 101, right? Because and upset they went to school, but they didn't do nothing. I'm saying they upset too, like they should have got a higher grade, you know, whatever. I, I mean, that's a whole nother show we could talk about uh, the mindset of that type of individual, yeah. Because I grew up in that environment, right? So mm. I can talk about it, and and they may take offense, but I'm, I may be, I'm still talking about me, right? Right? I mean, I was dyslexic and illiterate for a while, so when I say those things, I'm like, all right. You know, if the shoe fits, wear it. And if you pissed off that I said thug and hood and you uneducated and you shouldn't have done this and all this other stuff, get mad. Yeah. But if I'm also talking about that's what I did, mm -hmm. then how you getting mad about me doing what I do because you transpose that mindset onto yourself? Well, that's just even more unintelligent. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I proved my point. Exactly. I think so. Again, different backgrounds, right? Right. I like at least you dealt with like you know fake dealers, fake gangsters. I mean, real dealers, real gangsters. I dealt with people who were trying to be like like the the trying pretenders, to be what? like gangsters. Like, yeah, yeah. Like one person. Why that, would they try to be? Because of the society that we were in. So like, mind you, we're younger, so we're impressionable. Got and you. I remember there was this there was this, um this Caucasian fellow, mm -hmm. and he was like he told me and this other light skinned guy, we're not black. And exactly mm -hmm. because we didn't know what an eight ball was. Okay. And and we're not talking about food. So it's like <laughs> I'm like, that's what that's what meaning black, like that's what being black is. That's not intelligent. Like that's not really in, no, that's intelligent not. at all. And then to know that he's trying to be somebody or something that even those people, I think if they had the opportunity to choose might not choose that same field. Mm -hmm. So I feel like from that standpoint, you're not intelligent. Like you're all, like I always view people like that as, as dumb, as stupid. So I don't view them as dumb or stupid. And to some extent, I get the point about not intelligent. Mm -hmm. But you don't get to choose what color you are right. more than you get to choose your, your, your environment that you grow up in. Right. So at a young age, you are trained and taught stuff. Mm -hmm. And that becomes your foundation. Right. So the reason why he spoke in a ignorant manner, as opposed to not intelligent, it was ignorant, is because he just didn't know. And he may not even know who he is. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with many of us, not just black people, but definitely black people, because I'm in that community and I see it a lot. We don't know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, then a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is either based on what somebody told us mm -hmm. or we're just guessing at it or assuming it. But we really don't know. Right? For instance, um, Jerusalem, the song. Okay. Right? It is the number two most played song in the world. And it is a religious song mm -hmm. about going to Jerusalem. Right. Going to heaven. A lot of people don't know. That. But the other piece about it is it's Zulu. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been studying Zulu for many years, right. not just the language, but Shaka Zulu was one of the most powerful warriors, and the Zulu nation was one of the most powerful nations, military, and everything feared in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't get that in our history. We didn't talk about everybody else. We talk about, you know, Sun Tzu. We talk about, you know, Hitler. We talk about all of these people who were actually. You know, bad people. Yeah. Shaka Zulu was just notoriously powerful about taking care of his tribe. Mm -hmm. And they tried to extinguish the entire Zulu nation, not comparing it to the Jews, but they tried to extinguish the entire Jews. Mm -hmm. The Jews survived, mm -hmm. and here they are thriving. Mm -hmm. The Zulus survived, and that song. Jerusalem is, you know, a testament to their survival. And so I say all of that because both Jews and Zulu know who they are. Mm -hmm. I go to Africa and, you know, the um, president, the clerk and, and all of the other um, politics before apartheid or during apartheid tried to extinguish the language. Mm -hmm. And so Africana became the language of Africana. And 
They wanted people to not know who they were. Right. Never happened. But here in the United States, with computers and information and libraries and all kinds of resources, people still don't know who they are. Right. It's not all their fault. I grew up in Philadelphia where they tried to deliberately miseducate us. Mm. Not try, they did. I wasn't. Mm. They did. And 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 it's a whole different social concept movie about that or structure or research. But the point is, people don't know who they are. So this Caucasian guy that's saying, you know, you don't know what the eight ball is, so you're not black. He doesn't even know who he is. Right. So if he doesn't know who he is, what gives him the authority to start telling somebody else that they don't know who they are? Mm -hmm. So rather than it being unintelligent, it's sad. And a lot of these folks out here doing all of these negative things and portraying all of these images mm -hmm. is exactly what they're doing. They're portraying images. And the image that they're portraying is what they think they need to portray based on the images that they saw. Yeah. So they're mimicking. Yeah, it does. So if you're just mimicking, you're not learning. The real question is, who are you? So as an executive leadership coach, I get to coach presidents, CEOs, directors, military leaders, everybody, right? And somewhere in the coaching sessions, eventually we get to the question, who are you? Because I want to know their leadership philosophy. Right. And then I want to get them to write their leadership philosophy, mm -hmm. which most leaders don't have. And it's hard to write your own personal leadership philosophy that you can get on stage and read it and tell a thousand people what your leadership philosophy is so they know where you're coming from all the time because this is who you are. But if you don't know who you are, you can't write your leadership philosophy. Yeah. And I paused because I almost went down, you know, my my experience of there are people in leadership positions mm -hmm. and then there are leaders. Yeah. And they're not always the same. Yes, yeah. because you're in a leadership position don't mean you're a leader. Yeah. A lot of people in a leadership position mimic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they hurt people and yep. they say the wrong thing and they're badgering somebody or they're coming in being boisterous or they're angry, and they bring negative energy into the room. Mm -hmm. That's not leadership. Yep. That's the bully. Yep. That's being in charge. Yep. That's exercising power. Yep. That's having authority. But that's not leadership. Ain't and the reason power. why these people in leadership positions are not, and some people I tell them, like, you may have been in a leadership position for over 20 years, but you've never been a leader in your entire life. Because yeah. you don't even know who you are. Oh. If you don't know who you are, mm -hmm. how can you help others become the best version of themselves? Yeah. I'm a big proponent of you can't help somebody until you've helped yourself. So hey, to your point, you can't allow a dog and a person to stay in your house if you don't have a house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean. uh, yeah, sure. Come over. What's the address? Um, about that. Like that's <laughs> that's <laughs> it just don't really fit well. Yeah, in the house. but Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we hope you have had a good time. Like, like, like we said, bro, this, listen, this was supposed to be a little test run for the pilot. We ain't got our clothes on like the way we wanted to. We'll wear them next time. Hey, next time, <laughs> next time. But definitely hope you all appreciate this conversation. Hope you all learned something. And most importantly, please like, subscribe, comment, and tell anyone who's anyone about the show. Because not 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 necessarily for ratings, so we appreciate them. But at the same time, we want to get y'all feedback. Because maybe we said something that was off or sounded wrong, or you had questions about. It. I don't know. Like I know I know people might have question marks on something I said. So please share your thoughts and tell us. We I I, I know for a fact. I promise you, I will gladly reach out. And Reggie's pretty open himself too. And again, it's just two guys having genuine conversa conversation from different backgrounds. So, but before we do close. I do want to say, Reggie, I appreciate you because fun fact, he did challenge me when we um when we, we, were, we were fishing, and he was like, "I mean, yeah, if you're gonna call me, go ahead." And I and if you know Reggie, that's more of like, eh, I'm doubting it a little bit. So I was like, "Nah, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I call this man next day, next week type vibes." And I did, and we and now we're here, and I'm and this is really motivating because I gotta go help a friend move after this, and I promise you, I'm trying to think how can I avoid that. To go get some more recordings done. Like this is exciting, <laughs> bro. This is hustle. Exactly, exactly. So, Reggie, 
like from the bottom of my heart, just over the years, I appreciate you as a person. And I, I want, like, I, I just wanted to make sure I had it on camera. I know we had like a, a flowers segment, quote unquote, to possibly talk about, but like, I, I, I wanted to make sure I gave you your flowers and say thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I appreciate this. Thank you. All right. Well, on that note, in the words of uh, Russell Simmons, thank you. thank you very much. God bless. Hope you have a good one.